the front steps. Wow. Oh my goodness. And he's got little kids at home, doesn't he? Yeah, the, she, she screamed. She's what saw it. She screamed. Wow. Copperhead. Mm. Morning, Jeff and Sandy. Good to see you guys. I know uh, Joe sent a note in the, <clears throat> the group that Emory started that she couldn't be with us today. And uh, Melissa's at her mom's for the weekend, so I'm not sure that <clears throat> she'll get to be with us. Um, but uh, uh, maybe they will come in a little later on. <clears throat> All right. I've started the recording. Uh, glad you guys are here. <clears throat> and uh, Go ahead and put that on. Paulo's join us. Good to see you, Paulo. Nice to see you too. Yeah, thanks. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, anybody ever have people ask, well, <clears throat> what do you believe now? I, I, I know you've changed your beliefs or something. Uh, what do you believe? What, what's changed in your life? <clears throat> I see some, some heads nodding. Um, I want to, I'm going to share the screen here with you. If I can get this done. And uh, I put this on uh, <clears throat> on your uh, on the handout that uh, I emailed you. But <clears throat> one of the things that uh, that I'm uh, I've uh, made up my mind that I want to be saying to people rather than to <clears throat> well, this seems simple enough to me. Well, what I believe is God is good. God is only good god is always good to all people <clears throat> if there's something good whether it's in scripture or in a message or in a book <clears throat> or in people's lives if there's something good that comes from god <clears throat> if there's something not good well that's not god and for me then <clears throat> whenever somebody says well but what about well, if, if what they're bringing up, the what about, if it's not good, <laughs> then uh, at least in my opinion, that's not from God. So that's something that uh, seems to me to be a way uh, that we can, uh, you know, tell people what we, uh, what we believe. How does that sound to you guys? What are your thoughts on that? I love it. Good. It's an easy, uh, easy way to find your way down the road. Yeah. The goodness. Yeah. Dana? Uh, you... well, I was going to say the same thing. It, it uh, simplifies it instead of trying to explain, you know, how you think differently than you used to, which sometimes I do that. It doesn't help. <laughs> it's better, I think, to keep it simple like that. Yeah, good. Andre? Yeah, I would agree with everything you wrote there, definitely. And uh, it has to, it has to uh, whatever the doctrine is or the message is, it has to relate to God is love. God is unconditional love. And if it's not filtered through his love, then it's not from God because God is love. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And I've uh, been listening a lot to Malcolm Smith lately. I, I mean, I listen to him uh, every week anyway, when he has something new up, but uh, uh, he, he will often say um, that uh, the love of God and God's goodness are the same thing. Uh, yeah, they're two different Greek or Hebrew words, uh, but they're, you know, God is good. God is love. So the, uh, uh, when we say God is good, or when we say God is love, <clears throat> we're, we're saying the same thing. <clears throat> and I think there's a lot of truth to that. I, I mentioned to you all earlier that um, uh, what I just put up there and shared the screen, uh, that's the criteria that the early church fathers had. Uh, and Brad Jerzak ha has a great uh, uh, new book um, called A More Christ-Like Word. And uh, he, he's, uh, he's got a chapter in that on the early church and uh, uh, what, they, uh, what the early church fathers, the criteria that they had for people 
teaching and leading. And of course, in that time, almost all of it were, were like meetings and homes and that type of thing. But they had to, uh, uh, before they were to open the scripture or teach it or open their mouth, it was always to be through the, uh, the filter that God is good, God is only good, God is always good to all people. And uh, that's where I, I got that from. And, that, and that's, I, I love the simplicity of that. Uh, Philip just wrote, um, I can't recall if he ever thought differently about God's essence. It's good, <clears throat> even when he was in institutional denominational. And yeah, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Here, here's a quote that Malcolm Smith uh, made that I heard this week. He said, in his opinion, <clears throat> the greatest sin, and we know sin is missing the mark. He said, the greatest sin is missing the mark of God's perfect goodness and thus falling short, believing that God is less than perfect goodness. He says that sin or that missing the mark affects everything in your life, your thinking, your mindset, your actions, your mood, your attitude, your feelings, everything. So the, the, greatest, uh, the greatest example or the greatest missing the mark is not believing that God is perfect goodness. So there's, there's a lot in that uh, little simple statement. We're going to talk about some of that. Um, one of my favorite verses, and <clears throat> obviously there are a lot of them <clears throat> for all of us, but uh, Jesus said in John 10, 10, in the second half of that verse, he said, I came that all people may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Now that's kind of a combination of uh, uh, the passion and amplified and, uh, and maybe some other, I can't remember the different translations, but I have come, I came that all people may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. And the word life there is zoe, Z-O-E. Uh, and, you know, when you look that up in the concordances, it's the state of one who is possessed of divine vitality and is animate. So joy and enjoy come from, of course, the same uh, root word. And that got me to thinking this week about uh, what Jesus said the night before he died in John chapter 15, verse 5. And he starts this out, you know, this is the vine and, and the branches uh, thing. And Jesus said, and this, this is the, uh, uh, the, the passion. He said, as you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live as though you are separated from me, you're powerless. As you live in life union with me, and my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire, and it will be done. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my father. Jesus said, as you live in life union with me and my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire and it will be done. Now, the, <clears throat> I think the big question there is is do we believe that or not and <clears throat> so i want to take uh, just a little bit of time now and pray uh, for four different things and uh, i'm going to ask for volunteers one of you each to pray for each one of these four things and remembering that as we pray you know it, it's it, we're not begging a distant sky god to give us something we don't have uh, in reality, we're thanking God for uh, 
manifesting or bringing into existence in our lives something that we already have. And so uh, the first thing I want to tell you is about uh, a woman that we uh, were able to help in the last couple of days with the Grace Restoration Team. I'm going to call her. I'm going to call her Goldie, uh, like as in Goldie Hahn. Uh, and there's a reason I'm doing that, but I won't share it with you right now. But uh, uh, she's uh, a friend of one of you all. One of you all recommended uh, uh, that we help her. And uh, she has four kids, uh, three live at home and uh, single mom. She has sole financial responsibility uh, for those three kids that live at home with her. And uh, her job is uh, 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 pays probably at the most $12 an hour. Um, and so uh, keeping a family together and paying all the expenses for three kids and yourself on that is now she's, she has done well. Uh, however, uh, they need, uh, because the, one of the daughters who's still at home is like just out of high school, got a job, uh, needed transportation to get to the job. They needed another car and she's done well with managing the, the limited resources that she had. Um, but because of her job and stuff like that, um, you know, when you go to buy a car or a house or anything like that, um, generally they require a larger down payment if you don't have any credit or if you don't have uh, uh, much income that you can show, that kind of thing. And so uh, she's able to make some payments on a car, but uh, didn't have the money for a down payment. So one of you all told us about her, uh, recommended her. And uh, so we were able to give her a couple of days ago, uh, $4,000 to either buy a car or uh, to uh, make a, a sizable down payment on a, on a better car where she can handle the payments. So that, um, uh, I mean, that, that's thank you guys for <laughs> uh, providing the, the resources to do that. Um, and so one of the things that uh, I'd, I'd like somebody to pray for, uh, for this lady and, and her kids is that they find uh, uh, that God leads them to a car that's a good car that they won't have a lot of expenses on, uh, that they'll be able to afford the payments on and everything. Uh, so would one of you guys be willing to do that? I will. I will. Okay, Dana. Thanks. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Papa, that you're right there with this, um, woman that is in need for this transportation and we know that your will is for her good and so we just uh, thank you ahead of time for the provision that you're making for her to find just the right thing to get her daughter around and to help them and especially too with payments and what might be happening in the future thank you that you're with her and thank you that you are guiding her steps. And so we just put this before you and count on you to, to make it happen in the right way in the right time. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. Thank Amen. you so much. Yeah. Now, here's the second prayer request that I'd uh, like one of you all to volunteer and pray for. Uh, and if nobody wants to, that's fine. I, I'll do it. Uh, but uh because of that $4,000 payment that we made, which I'm really grateful that, uh, that we could, uh, and because of some ongoing commitments, this is actually the last month for uh, uh, another uh, single mom that I've been calling June, um, we're, uh, we're down to, I, I want to keep a $1,000 uh, in the, that account just for an emergency that might come up for somebody. So <clears throat> we're down to about a thousand dollars in that account, uh, which I'm I'm grateful that we have. Uh, and I'm not asking anybody to uh, give if you know if the Lord's not uh, prompting you to do that. Um, but I just I'd like somebody to pray <clears throat> that uh, uh, resources will come in uh, from whoever, so that we can build that fund back up. So the next time we find somebody who needs a 
uh, another car or something like that, we can can provide that. So uh, anybody be willing to pray for that? I got that one. Okay. Father God, we love you. We know how much you love us. We thank you for your goodness, mm. your wonderful, wonderful love to us. Mm. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunities that you've given us to reach out and share your love with others. And Lord, we just pray that you would uh, continue to load the coffers mm. with your grace and your your finances everything everything in the whole universe is yours and lord we just thank you that you made that accessible to us mm. and we thank you for uh, providing always providing and always always being right in the middle of everything that we do and mm. uh, more than more than anything else, Lord, we thank you so much for uh, your love flowing through us, to us, through us, and back. Lord, we just uh, we love you. We praise you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I, I know that I, I'm. It's my prayer that you all know this. That uh, you know, I'm, we're not asking anybody to give, and don't don't want anybody to feel bad if you can't. Uh, what you can do is to join and praying just like JL did that uh, uh, Papa will provide the people uh, who uh, will give. And, and part of that, uh, we're starting to see that happen is through uh, uh, the book, Grace to All. People are reading that, reading about our ministry to, uh, to single parents. And, and uh, so, so that's a good help. All right. Now, the third thing, um, this is for our friend, Roger Sprecher, who is a uh, online with us via the phone. Uh, he's, <clears throat> Kitsy has him uh, on the phone. Uh, most of you know that Roger was, uh, uh, had to leave his apartment of, or place where he'd lived for over 45 years and uh, <clears throat> lived on that same little uh, compound for over 50 years. Uh, and uh, uh, right now he's uh, staying at a hotel. Uh, and, you know, so that's, you know, costing more money than an apartment would be, but he's on the he's on the list uh, to be accepted at a at a really good independent living place where uh, uh, he and Kitsy went and looked at a couple of days ago. They don't have any vacancies right now, <clears throat> but uh, he's on the list, close to the top of the list for when somebody has to leave there or they die or for whatever reason one comes up, he's on the list for that. So <clears throat> I'd like for somebody to pray that. Uh, 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 you know, that, that, uh, that he would be able to get a place there really soon, or, uh, you know, a place that might even be better, uh, somewhere else. So, uh, who'd be willing to pray for that? Philip, is that you? Yeah, I just, I just had a question. Um, I read it about a week or two ago, um, about this gentleman. Uh huh. Uh, it's not very clear to me why does why has he been evicted? I mean, it sounded all conspicuous to me when I first read it. Well, the the people, <clears throat> I'll just be brief, but, but I do want to answer your question. Um, the the people who own a uh, little place where he lived and one next to it, it's all on their property. They they have a big three story house. Uh, they're getting older. It's harder to go up and down steps. Uh, they're looking ahead to the future. Um, so they've decided to sell uh, their big house and build a, a, a ranch level house, uh, one, one floor house on their property. There, there's quite a bit of space on the property, <clears throat> but that involves uh, uh, tearing down these two uh, older buildings. So uh, in, in a nutshell, that's it. Okay, Andre? Well, I just had a question because uh... I lost connection on my side here. The screen went off, and I'm just wondering if it happened on your side too. <clears throat> no. No. <clears throat> I must just be local then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who who would uh, pray for our friend Roger? K. 
inquiété. Lord, I thank you so much for Roger and the great friend he is to so many. I thank you, Lord, for the many ways that you love him and show your love in, to him and through him to other people. And Lord God, I thank you that we have known him for so long and uh, just the blessing that he is. And Lord, I know you have the perfect place for him. And he and I have prayed about this before, that the ways that you take care of him are just amazing. And I just thank you, whether it's at the place Paul described or another place, we know you have a place for Roger. And we know that you are going to bless many other people through him, wherever he is, just as it happens every time he goes to one of his favorite restaurants, the people are, are so glad to see him and you bless them through him. And we thank you, Lord, for your plans for Roger. In your name, I pray. Amen. 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 And for those of you here in Lawrence, uh, if it works out, Roger's going to join us tonight. Uh, when we meet at uh, Six Mile Chop House. So some of you haven't been able to be with him for a long time. Uh, we look forward to that. Okay. Uh, yeah, one, one other uh, prayer request. Uh, I haven't talked to her about this, so uh, hopefully it's okay to share it. Uh, our friend Melissa, who you can see on the screen here, uh, she's doing some uh, uh, administrative secretarial uh, administrative assistant type things and typing and uh, uh, proofreading and making Excel sheets and, and different things like that. <clears throat> and uh, she'd love to be able to do that from uh, home and to make uh, uh, an income uh, sufficient enough that uh, she can pay all her bills and be self-sufficient in doing that. And uh, I want to uh, help her with that. And I'm going to uh, in the near future, I'm going to give you guys some uh, uh, some thoughts on that. But I just I want to uh, I want to make that known to any of you who might need somebody to do research on the internet, which she's really good at, or the things that I mentioned. But I'd I'd like us to just pray that God. This is delightfully expecting effortless manifestation uh, that God will send work her way that. Uh, that she's good at, that she enjoys, uh, that she can do and bless somebody else with and uh, uh, make an income from that. So who would, who would pray for that? Philip? Philip, what was your... Okay, we lost Philip there. And Kitsy, I saw your hand. Did you want to pray for that too? Yeah, yes, I do, if that's okay. Yeah, please do. <laughs> oh, Lord, what wonderful things you have done in Melissa's life. And it's just amazing to see uh, your, your hand on her. And to bring her this far and where she is now, Lord, I'm just so grateful. And I'm so grateful for the friendship that we all have with her and the many ways that you bless us all through her and others as well. And Lord, we know that you have plans, Melissa, plans to, to help her, plans to help her flourish. And uh, we are just... Uh, anxious to see that, but we know your timing is best. And we know that her work is really good. And we love those of us who have seen this. We love the devotionals that she shares with us now. And I, I pray that that really expands to a, a greater community as well. So they too will know your great love for them. But Lord, I pray for peace for Melissa, for, for trust in you, knowing that you you will continue to take care of her and you will bless her and you will provide for her. And we thank you so much for that. In your name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Sure. Sure. All right. Now, um, I want to go back to uh, 
John 15, 5. I, I read uh, part of it uh, earlier, going on with verse 9. <clears throat> uh, Jesus said to the disciples, and by extension to us, I love each of you with the same love that the Father loves me. Boy, that's, that's a profound thing. Jesus loves each one of us with the same love the Father loves him. He says, you must continually let my love nourish your hearts. Verse 11, Jesus said, my purpose for telling you these things is so that the joy I experience will fill your hearts with joy and overflowing gladness. Jesus has told us all these things. He revealed who the Father is, what he's like, so that the joy that he experiences will fill our hearts with joy and overflowing gladness. Now, if our hearts are not filled with joy and overflowing gladness, I'm going to give you, well, we're going to have a chance to talk about maybe why they're not. He goes on in verse 12 to say, so this is my command. And the original language there means this is superseding the law and all of the other commands. Love each other deeply as much as I have loved you. For the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices his life for his friends. Now, you and I and all people have abundant life that we can experience and enjoy it's overflowing gladness it, we should be overflowing with gladness <clears throat> jesus gave us that and his gifts are real and irrevocable so i want to i want to just discuss here and there's no uh I, I have different thoughts on this but <clears throat> obviously there are a lot of different facets why would at any given time we or any per person not be experiencing and enjoying abundant life. Why, why would we, Jesus has given us that. That's why he came. Uh, he lives in us. So why would we not be experiencing and enjoying that abundant life? JL. Because he, we don't believe it. <laughs> We just don't. We just don't believe it. You know, we've been been brainwashed to believe something different. Yep. Yep. Anders, I just wondered. I cannot find that uh, scriptures in the notes and scriptures today. John fifteen five. Yeah, cannot find it. I might have. Uh, I might have added that after I sent the notes out. Okay. Sorry. It's from the Psalms uh, here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was just wondering. Okay. Yeah. Andre. Well, it's, it's like, uh, like our brother said, you know, it's like we don't believe, you know, if we've been brainwashed by false doctrines about God and our union, our oneness with him. And so we live out of a concept of separation. You know, it's, it's ingrained in us, even after you know the truth, you know, you, you still have to fight that off because it's like old habits die hard, you know, it's been on attached uh, inside our soul for, for, for years and years. And even when you know the truth, you still have to apply it, you still have to live by it. And as I was, when I was meditating this morning, I was thinking about the scripture where he says, if we have been united with him in his death, and then you translate in the English, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. But that's a, that's a bad translation. Because when you look in the Greek, it's not a future tense. It says, if we have been united with him in his death, we are also united with him in his resurrection. The Greek word is I, me, which is a timeless present tense, you know? So why, why, <laughs> like why would we be united in his death if we're not united with him in his resurrection, that'd be pointless, right? So we're living in resurrection life. 
and we have not been awakened to this. Like we're, we're still relating to the old life, but we are on the resurrection <laughs> side of the cross. Yeah. And it's, yeah. that's for everybody. That's for everybody because he said, if, if one died for all, then all died. All were united in his, in his death and all are united in his resurrection. That's yeah. for all of humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Kitsy? Well, I feel that um, we wouldn't trust Jesus. We wouldn't believe all the things that have been said already. And we listen to the negative thoughts in our mind and don't uh, live in the now. And we aren't aware of the things around us and uh, how the Lord cares for us and loves us and shows all of that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Melissa, did you have some? Actually, they've pretty much uh, said what I was going to say, but sometimes you can believe that about God just fine, but you've fallen into, um, you've got a habitual thought pattern <laughs> that, uh, and you've listened to the lie that you're not deserving. And mm -hmm. so you might believe it's for other people, but not for you. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, Sandy. Yeah. Uh, I love what has proceeded here and, and uh, my pulling it, pull, how I, how I, have viewed it in my life is believing is receiving. And after you've received, you, you, you also believe. So it, it, it really is circular. And anytime we get off that plane of understanding, you know, as others have described, we are, we're, we're missing out on the fullness of, of this abundant life. You spoke of abundant love and all that comes with relationship with God who initiated the relationship. We must never forget that. We are, we are his love, interest, children, and, and desire. And anything as your, as your uh, earlier uh, word equation about God and love, and uh, described anything that gets us off track from those realities will will prevent could could prevent or block receiving the very thing God is sending into our lives. And Melissa, that's that's uh, very true for what you're believing God for. Uh, it is not it's not on God's end <laughs> that there's any lack ever. And the desire he puts in your heart for anything, dear, is, is his desire. It, it wells up within you by his unction. So, so just receive it. And when I say just receive it, I mean go look for it or, or allow it when it comes. Yeah. It's yeah. on the doorstep. Yeah. So. Looking for it is expecting it to happen and uh, looking. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, gosh, uh, you know, all that's good. I just kind of summarized there. Uh, you know, you guys said sometimes we don't know uh, that we have that abundant life or maybe we don't believe that we really do. Maybe we think, well, yeah, that's for other people, but uh, not for me because of whatever uh, reason. Uh, and then, you know, we can make our choices <laughs> ourselves that uh, literally steal and kill and destroy uh, that abundant life. And, and other people make choices, you know, other people, well-meaning or not, can say things or do things that uh, um, if we allow it, we'll, we'll steal. Uh, as Jesus said in the first part of that verse, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. And I've taught you all before that earlier in that chapter and in the chapter before, John 9 and the first uh, nine verses of, of John chapter 10, uh, Jesus makes clear that the thief who comes to steal and kill and destroy um, is uh, religion. He's specifically talking about that there. And <clears throat> again, you know, generally people are not uh, uh, maybe consciously trying to do it, but, but anytime that, that we hear from somebody that God is not really good, yeah, he's good, but Anytime we hear that, 
that will steal and kill and destroy the abundant life that we have. Andre? Oh, I just want to double check with everybody here that uh, my screen, uh, your picture uh, disappeared. And I wanted to know if uh, you, any of you out there saw my picture disappear from the screen because I, I seem to have connection problem. Uh, no, nope. we, we can see you. So, I, so my screen didn't disappear earlier, like a few seconds ago? Uh-uh. No, yeah, did yeah, it did, Andre. Just your name <laughs> appeared. I did notice that. Yeah, so that's probably uh, probably local. It's probably a bad connection here for some reason. Okay, mm -hmm. so just to so that you know, if, if I'm gone, it's not it's, it's not intentional. <laughs> you didn't get raptured. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Dana, you're up. Um, well, you know, when we were talking about the question, why would we not be experiencing the abundant life? And I thought, to me, what I'm I believe I'm learning and is that, and this is from, I can't remember his name, but the great teacher you just went to visit in Colorado. Oh, um, Mike Popovich. Yeah. Well, you know, he's saying that it's the seed that we, that the seed that we plant, I guess would be like our belief. And then it seems to me, and then it grows of itself and we're not, making it happen but at the same time i wonder if it also is because we like you were saying um oh i'm trying to think sandy or jeff that it's a a cycle of we have to focus and intentional focusing and expectation like you said paul that um you know we can so easily be distracted and so it's like an intentional, but not unbelief type thing, <laughs> you know, that we just keep on keeping on in uh, our focus that in great expectation, expectation and delight that how much he loves us and that he wants that for us. And like Melissa said, it's not, you know, for others just. <laughs> It's yeah. for us too. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Very yeah. good. Yeah, Philip. All right. Um, um, I just want to answer uh, from uh, the other gentleman. I think it's Andre, or I've, yeah, it's Andre. Yes, he's uh, next to next to my portrait uh, on at least at my end. Um, when I was praying uh, for Melissa. I was cu cut off completely. I mean, obviously, you would have noticed that. Right? Am I correct? Yes, you were cut off completely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to answer to say that I've been cut off. This is the first time I've ever been cut off from Zoom. I used to be cut off a lot from Skype, but this is the first time from Zoom now. Huh. But anyway, and the second thing, I had a uh, an answer for you uh, in your inbox, uh, Paul. Seems like we may not have been taught to have the consciousness of an indwelling Christ when we first believed the gospel. Therefore, we don't have a moment by moment consciousness of him within us all the time. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, let me, uh, <clears throat> let me say, let's think about, here's something I'd like us to think about. <clears throat> what if we don't really believe God is good, only good, and always good to all people. What if we don't really believe that? And here's what I'm getting at. <clears throat> Stuff happens, <laughs> doesn't it? When things don't go well, do we think God is good, only good, always good to us? Do we trust that he's always working all things for the good, for our good? Are we confident that he didn't cause a bad situation to happen to teach us something? What if the reason that we don't always experience the joy and abundant life and goodness 
that we have that Jesus came to give us and did give us. What if it's because when things don't go well in our life, or at least circumstances seem to say they don't go well, we tend to think, well, it, it's God causing that. Uh, he, he's not always good. What do you think about that? Bill? I, I go back to uh, the Apostle Paul when he said, what I want to do, I can't do what I don't want to do. I end up doing. Who can deliver me? And he said, I thank God that I have been delivered. I really think that most of, the, of our spiritual life, we are already in Christ. We are already seated in the heavens. Our reaction to what we go mostly comes from the distractions of life, because even if we say we believe that God is good all the time, that's religion talking, because we don't believe that God is good all the time, even though we say that a lot of times to convince ourselves that he is, because we happen to be going through something that we don't understand and is more powerful than what we've got. But the Holy Spirit's ministry is to always bring us back to the reality of him to where we know that he is good. If you go out here and ask somebody that goes to one church name what's good and you ask another one that has another church name what's good, you'll find out that their ideas of what good is, is different. And that they're so, if you're going to measure it on what good is, then all of a sudden you're measuring God just like we used to measure him when, we, when he came up short because his love wasn't big enough to cover everybody. So in reality, I see my biggest hindrance to knowing a, the abundant life is the distractions of life in the, as a human being and that we have been delivered from that and we can at any time let not our hearts be troubled. We didn't say we wouldn't have troubled hearts. He said, let not your heart be troubled. And so in the process of that, we can. All we have to do is go back to the reality, and that's what the Holy Spirit brings us back to all the time. And, and in our life, as long as we're alive and in this flesh, the Holy Spirit is going to be leading us, comforting us, doing the things that he does do that we very seldom ever get in credit for. And uh, that is being who he is, that we might realize who we are. Good. Yeah, well said. Good. I love this. Well, me too. And four, <laughs> Thanks, four, <Bill. laughs> yeah, four of you have got your hand up, so we're gonna gonna go in order. Andre. Oh, I just wanted to echo what uh, Dana said earlier about focus. You know, it says uh, in scripture, whatever is true, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is a good report thing about such thing. You know? That's uh, that's a call for responsibility on our part. We're the one doing the thinking. And so we have to we have to be thinking about the truth of God's goodness, about our oneness, our union with him, that we're never separated, that he lives in us, that uh, that the abundant resurrection of life lives, uh, of Christ lives inside of us. And so if our focus is on this and we live from this, then it's like the morning sun uh, dissipating the morning fogs, you know. All those circumstances, you know, they, 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 they go away because we don't, we don't go by outside circumstances. We have to go by what we know is true. And eventually those circumstances have to line up with the truth that's in our lives. Yeah, that's very good. Very good. Jeff? <clears throat> well, I'm uh, just make sure you, your question was, why do we think it's God when things don't go right? Was there another component to that? Well, no, basically, I, I think that's why we, uh, uh, what if we don't really believe God is good, only good, always good to all people? Is Can that be what keeps us from experiencing the abundant life that he has for us? Well, you know, uh, Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh, and I don't, I don't recall exactly if he thought God gave it to him, but he did appeal to God to take it from him. So that would, uh, 
back to Andre for a minute, his point about focusing, if we focus on what is out of our control and, and then look to blame someone, we're going to do that. And really, as so someone said, it, it, I heard the circus is in our head. <laughs> you know, they, they trying to trying to boil down something and then and then blame someone or or get or find relief. But thinking of the Apostle Paul for just a minute, he learned to take the thing God said would overcome, which was his grace being sufficient, and that that grace never stops flowing from God. We always got the grace to deal with whatever comes our way literally yeah. whatever comes our way and just test put that you know test if you're going to test something test that test yeah. the grace of god that's and absolutely you right see, you will yeah. see he's given you everything you need for life and godliness he's given you everything everything that's good jeff and yeah paul said it, a messenger from satan gave him that uh, uh, thorn uh, in the side and uh, uh, the, the temptation for us who have been taught this way and not everybody has been, but the temptation is to think, well, God gave me that thorn in the side to teach me a lesson. No, uh, God, God, if God is only good, then uh, he doesn't give you thorns in the side. Now, Paul also wrote in Romans 8, we know that God continually works all things for the good. So even though we got a thorn in the side, or even though our situation doesn't seem like we would like it to be, we can know that God is working that for the good. God didn't cause the situation. Most likely, we caused it by poor decisions or somebody else caused it by poor decisions or, or whatever. Uh, but we know that God is good and he's working even that situation for the good. And that helps us to focus on the abundant life that he's given us. Kitsy. I just, I just had to laugh when um, Jeff was talking about the circus being in our mind. We have a saying in our house, and you all have probably ever heard this too, um, but we say, not my circus, not my monkey. So we're not going there. <laughs> we're going to let that be somebody else's if they want it. Um, uh, but Paul, you said what, uh, uh, what can keep us from experiencing the abundant life? And I agree with everything everybody's been saying. This is an awesome conversation. I love it. But something that I'm learning is that God has something better. If there's something that I really want, but it's not happening, I'm learning to think that God has something better for me and trust him. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And that, that goes right along with if he's working all things for the good, well, <laughs> he, he's got something better than what's going on right now, or maybe even better than what we'd like to have happen. Uh, that isn't happening yet. That's good. JL? Okay, it's DeVell, actually. DeVell? Hey, um, I, I want to share an experience um, that was life-changing for me. Good. I found myself in a place where I really was just in despair, and I sobbing uh, before the Lord about feeling like, you know, I had no control. I'm free falling through life and it is, nothing was okay. And, and I felt like God just said to me, called me up short and just said, Develle, who do you think you are? Do you not know that I have you in the palm of my hand? And, and it, it encompassed so much in my life, I mean, it was like I went from a gut sob experience to, okay, okay, God. I mean, I, it just changed everything. And, and my takeaway from that is that, you know, who, who do we think we are to doubt God? He yeah. said he has everything in control. And, and our perspective on it 
you know, we kind of look at things and we think, you know, is everything out of control? It's absolutely not if we trust God. Okay, and then what do we consider to be abundant life? Who gets to decide what that abundant life is? It is abundant in an individual way between you and God. And for us to look on to each other or to think by our environment that we want something more because we're responding to an artificial world. You know, it, it, is, it is enough to be with God and to trust him every moment of every second. And my experience is, is once you do that, I mean, I'm not going to say emotions and doubts and things don't come on you, but they can be instantly or very quickly moved away from because you know underlying that God has you right there and just experience that. And it's, there's no going back. It's not like it creeps up on you anymore. In my, in my experience, it isn't like it just is looming and creeping up all the time. You know, occasionally I say I find myself there, but man, just accept it. Just accept that God has you, loves you, and each and every one of us perfectly in our own little relatable way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Deville. Amen. Yeah. Let me let me interject just a moment, Emery. Uh, be reconciled to God. That's what I heard as you shared uh, toward the end, Deville. And that's what it is. It's reckoning and uh, reconciling with God. What what does God say about this? Paul says that all the time. You know, what what do God has? What does God have to say about this? That's what I think that scripture is saying to us in, in this application. <clears throat> be reconciled to God. Don't forget him in the in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, very good. Emery? I think in my uh, past religious experience that I based God's goodness as being conditional. And I was taught that if you obeyed God, that he was going to be good to you. And if you disobeyed him, he was going to punish you. So I still, uh, in the back of my head, <laughs> still, uh, that comes to the forefront sometime, though, though I now know that it's not true, but if circumstances aren't going the way I want them to be, I can see uh, my thinking going back to my old beliefs. And uh, it's easy for me to judge God's goodness on the circumstances that are going on in my life. So uh, I know that we are to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I do know that if I do believe, don't believe that God is good, uh, that doesn't change the fact that God is good. And as Paul uh, prayed, to, uh, I think it was in Ephesians where he said, I pray that you will know, not that you will get, but that you will know the, the width, uh, you know, the depth, the height of God's love. So uh, abundant living is to me coming to understand that my identity, my being is in Jesus Christ, that I am complete in him. He come here to give, to show God's perfect response to humanity. He in the incarnation through his life, death, resurrection and ascension has made me everything God has ever wanted me to be so in that sense i am complete and i am everything god ever wanted me to be i just 
need God to help me to believe that more and more because it is true, not because I need to make it true. Yeah, absolutely. It's good. Yeah, Kitsy. Amen. <clears throat> and Emory, you are on a journey just like everybody else on this screen mm -hmm. and, and everybody else in the mm -hmm. world. And I love hearing you talk about your journey and how you're getting closer and closer to always believing the truth. And I just praise God for that. Thank yeah. you. Me too. Yep. Carolyn, was your hand up? No. Okay. And Jeff? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to chime in with Kitsy for Emory. And uh, I, I heard, uh, you know, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he's Lord. And, 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 and I heard that a thought is like a tongue. It's something talking to you, you know, be it the old thoughts that what did I do to make this situation like it is, you know, what, what is God doing negatively in my life now because of that? Yeah. And, and it's something you've moved on from it, it's, mm -hmm. and it is something that of, it's an immature thought for one who is known, known in Christ or knows Christ in a, in a deeper way. So, so just because it rears its ugly head, this thought, this tongue, no, it's got to account to God in your life and does. And it, it is, it's immature, meaning it's, it's, it's of a juvenile time in your life and learning that that was not appropriate and it couldn't take you the full distance in Christ, but has to be cast off. And yeah. I, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I just want to encourage you. This is God's encouragement to, for all of us to know that any thought that hinders, that, that uh, can't, does not conform or comport with our current understanding of the love of God and of his care and nurturing of our lives, must go by the wayside it's yeah cross it's it's unnecessary for the journey yeah very good and, and i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, elaborate on that for just a minute it's something i'm gonna be teaching on coming up um so i uh i want i want to ask jl to get ready to play for us we're going to sing uh get see you're up and then i'm going to elaborate on what jeff said hey okay actually it's roger Okay. There you go, Roger. Well, as believers, I think uh, we will all see the truth and we will all see a big resolve because we'll be in heaven. There will be no more doubts. Isn't that true, Emery and Jeff and all the rest of us? And, yeah. Uh, we will know that God is always good all the time. Yeah. Yes. Amen. We will. And and we can know that now too. I uh, I I want to I want to just riff off of what uh, Emory said and, and JL said there for a minute. Um uh we are tempted to think sometimes when things aren't good that it uh that it's because of something bad we did or we didn't believe enough or we didn't have enough faith or whatever <clears throat> that goes back to uh, uh the old testament old covenant thinking that's uh, uh best exemplified in deuteronomy 28 the first half of that chapter says all of these things that god's going to bless us with when we're good and then it says but if we're not good uh all these curses are going to come upon us <clears throat> right, that's that's old covenant thinking and uh, the best explanation that I've heard of that is uh, I, I heard Brad Jerzak talking about this. In, uh, and I think I sent you all a, a link to it in an uh, 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 interview that he did with, with Mike Popovich. But it's really good uh, in, this, in this new book that he has. Um, and it ties in with what the early church fathers said. Um, Any time, see, I wonder, I might have this. Uh, here are my notes. Let me see. No, no. Uh, anytime we read something in scripture 
or anywhere else that seems to say that God is not good or that God is punishing us because of evil that we've done or something like that. The early church fathers said that does not honor God who is all good. So we are to realize when we see that in scripture, that was written by people, as Jesus said, who didn't know the father and didn't know Jesus. And nobody did until Jesus came. So whenever we see in scripture, somebody writing that God's going to punish you because you did or didn't do this, or God caused these bad things or whatever happened, that was, that was written by somebody who didn't know the fullness or the completeness of God. And Jesus came to reveal the error of that thinking and to show us that God is indeed totally good and only good and always good for all people. So that's a, when we get these thoughts in our mind that, well, I, you know, I bet God did this because <clears throat> whatever, uh, go to this, what we've been talking about here that no, that's, that's not God. That's no matter what scripture might say, uh, scripture could be written by somebody that didn't yet know, uh, the truth about God, as Jesus told us. So, all right, we're going to, we'll have a little bit more time to uh, talk after we do this, but I want to ask you all, if you haven't already to mute yourself, I think most of you have, because JL's going to play and we can sing along with him. Uh, a good, good father. If you don't mute yourself, <clears throat> don't sing because it'll all be cacophony and we don't want that yeah, it'll, throw, it'll throw me way off <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right go ahead jl i've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like but i've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night as you tell me that you're pleasing that I never know. You're a good, good father to you all, to you all, to you all. And I'm loved by you, to I am, to I am, to I am. And I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know that we're all searching for answers. Only you provide because you know it's what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. To you are, to you are, to you are, and I'm loved by you. To I am, to I am, to I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To you are. Father, to you are, to you are, to you are. 
Amen. Here. There we go. Here we go. Thank you, JL. <clears throat> Thank you so much. All right. Just a few minutes left. Uh, who has any, especially anybody who hadn't had the opportunity to, uh, to talk yet, who has anything you want to say about God's goodness and uh, our experience of that or whatever the Lord's putting on your heart to to say emory jesus says i am the way the truth and the life baxter kruger has this saying uh may the truth of your being be the be the way of your being the way of your being is what you think about yourself but you have to think of yourself in the light of the truth of your being. And the truth of your being is your ontology. And uh, your ontology is realizing that your identity, your uh, being is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And when you see that, you, life becomes abundant. That is the way life becomes abundant yeah, yeah. good good Amen. Melissa? Melissa um I actually think I might have received an answer to this while I was sitting and thinking about it but I I wanted to say I've tried to have this conversation with people before and had them say to me well why can't it be both God is good but every good father disciplines their children so they've turned it from punishment to discipline and um so i wasn't able to make any headway in the conversation so i was just wondering what everyone thought god's loving discipline would look like and that kind of answers it right there it would look loving <laughs> i think any cur anything along that line from god would be gently steering us toward the right way to go not you know any repercussions for our actions or does that does that sound right well, that's absolutely right and we can go to the interlinear bible and look up what the original meaning of the word that's translated into english as discipline is uh it's never punishment for punishment's sake uh it's never uh mean-spirited it's never uh evil uh, it, it's always teaching us, lovingly teaching us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Lenny and then Bill. Yeah. I was also going to say for Melissa, one of the things, if, if God was all about punitive punishment, that would create fear, which would make people never want to have anything to do with them. And I think it was first John says, true love casts out all fear. That's so, a good point. So how do we have how could we have fear if there's the punishment? So it would actually be not a punitive punishment, but it would be restorative and curative. So he doesn't, he doesn't punish by slapping people around. He punishes by saying, Hey, I really love hanging out with you. Let's go talk sometime. Let's hang out. Yeah. That's a lot. Oh, that's a point. massive amount different. <laughs> yeah. Very good. That's so very good. good. Yeah. Bill and then JL closes up. Bill. Long, long, long time ago, uh, I had a secret fear. And I said, from my youth, I was filled with a secret fear of a God who was always watching, and was always lurking near, watching my every move, listening to everything I say, measuring my love for the things I do, and storing them up for judgment day. What a joyful day when I found the reason he was near was to guide and protect me, his purchased pride, which he holds so dear. It still fills my heart with joy. Oh, good. Send me that, Bill. Yeah, that's great. Amen. All right, JL, wrap us up. 
okay, it's pretty hard to get past he's a good, good father. That's all there is to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> if, if you, and I'm, I'm kind of going back to Melissa's thing about discipline. If you want to see God's act of discipline, look at the parable of the son. Yes. That's yeah. God's, that's an example of God's discipline. Wow. Uh, that's good reminder. It doesn't get any better than that, right? No. Good, J.M. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Oh, man. Very good. Guys, this is, this has been wonderful. Uh, Philip, go ahead. Yeah. It's, um, uh, short while ago maybe a few weeks ago i was uh, reading a certain book called raising hell uh, it kind of challenged my not my meaning my belief in hell but more or less my uh, my belief in conditional immortality and uh, the issue of the translation of punishment came up as well uh, at least more than once and i saw that the um, uh, translation of it is punishment uh the i don't know the greek word but the the other trans words are correction and pruning which i it completely uh, dumbfounded me because it's not something i'd ever thought about and uh so i just thought i'd just add that yeah no oh, that's good jail did you have something else or is your hand just still up okay kitsy um, the words God and discipline and punishment just do not go together in my mind. <laughs> just God and love. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well said. Well said. All right. Uh, and Lenny said, Richard Murray's got a website that says a lot about God's goodness. Yeah. We're, we're going to continue to talk about uh, uh, God's goodness because pretty much is the uh, the bottom line in it mm -hmm. uh, all right this has really been good thank you guys uh, so much and um, uh, thank you for the prayers uh, earlier that we did and again for those of you uh, who can join us uh, uh, tonight at six mile hopefully it'll work out for roger to be there so you guys can see him and encourage him uh, in person and, uh... oh, oh sorry that was roger saying hand up can he say something Yes, uh, there you go. thank you guys very much for praying for me. I really appreciate that. And Pavel, thank you for those shirts. I have one on right now. <laughs> thank you, JL. <laughs> yeah, great. God, God is good, isn't he? <laughs> all, all the, the time. Okay, all the time. One of those tonight. Okay. Cool. All right. Just hey. Sure. Hey, thank you. Thank you, guys. All of you. Love you all. Uh, We'll, I'll see you next time or be in touch in between. So grow in grace. Shalom. Love you all. Shalom. 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 Shalom.